we have met this uh, block block and the next step is just execute this go this go the first video we have met Robbie 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 hey guys my name is Alex and thank you very much for stop by really appreciate your visit and today I just want to focus my efforts in trying to get a better code design from the previous problem that we have solved in the previous video and I just want to make sure that we are going through this process you know the way that my mind works which is understanding the problem and understanding all of the the goals of that problem and then we can solve the problem with coding and after that that we can think about co-design and design patterns and all of that crazy things just to get a better and readable code. Going straight to the point, I'm still using this RapidWit web website, which is uh, a website that you can just go there and write some code snippets, you know, in the language that you like the most. That's amazing. And I'm not gonna go to so much details here because I'm kind of assuming that you have watched the previous video, but uh, when you take a look at this code, this version, this was the final version of that code, you can see that it's difficult to figure out what's happening here because you have local variables and you have this while loop inside another for loop expression. So we have this nested for loops and it's difficult to understand. That's it. So my first step, just to get a little bit better code, I just want to make sure that we have responsibilities in their right places. And when I take a look at this, uh, I can see two main responsibilities. The first one is that we are going through uh, this array and validating if the item is prime or not. That's one responsibility. The second responsibility is that we have this kind of logic uh, which validates if the number is prime or not. So what I want to do is I just want to move this piece of code into a specific method so we can have them separated. So uh, let's create this first method. So we already have this method here is prime. And then I just want to move this piece of code. Let's remove this and this part also. And there you go. Now we have this is prime number, which is uh, validating if the number is prime or not. That's quite simple. So the next step is to remove this is prime local variable because uh, it doesn't make any sense. And I can just say, hey, if you are not a prime number, that's totally fine. I can just return a false because you are not a prime number. That's quite simple. That is also an important step, which is returning true if the number is actually a prime number. So if you can see, as you can see here, you have the while number greater than one. And if this is, this is not a prime number, I'm going to return false. So by the end of this while, if you don't return false, that means that your prime number is here. Your number is prime. So what happens is that by the end of this Y expression, I can just say return true. That's it, that's very simple. And then there is actually one more thing here. So uh, we were just validating if the item was equal or not in the first uh, for loop expression. But uh, the reality is that now this number doesn't know this uh, is prime method, doesn't know about this expression. So you can accidentally pass one as an argument. So I don't want to validate this here. I just want to validate inside the method because uh, as you may already know, number one is not a prime number by definition. So I can just say, hey, please return false if the item is equal to one. That's very, very simple and it's, it's almost plain English. Now that I'm validating if the number is prime or not, uh, I will just use this method, right? So let's say that I have this uh, if is prime. So what I can do is I can just say, hey, this is prime. We'll just 
uh, call the new method. So is prime will call the is prime method, passing the item as an argument. So if we execute, let's say if I have something wrong here, uh, okay, you have this for loop expression. I'm gonna call this is prime method, and that seems really okay. So the result should be four. Let's execute, and yeah, it's working. However, just because this is working, that doesn't mean that we can change a few things to get a better code design. So uh, when you look at this part of the code, well, we can get that a little bit better when you think about blocks in Ruby. In the first video, we have met Ruby blocks, which is great, by the way. And again, I'm kind of assuming that you have watched that video, so I'm just going to replace this for loop expression for a block. So let's get this array. I'm going to keep this method just to, you know, uh, just in case. And I'm going to use this array dot count, which means that I'm going to use this block with the count. And for each item that I have inside this block that I'm going to create, I just want to ask a question. And the question is, is prime and pass the item as an argument. So this is beautiful. This is beautiful. I'm going to just get this. And now instead of using this prime account, because this is a block and uh, Ruby would just automatically say, hey, don't worry about counting that manually. I have this array of numbers and for each number, I'm gonna call this expression. And once this expression is true, then I, I I'm automatically count that number for, it. that's amazing, that's amazing, really, really amazing. And what I can do here, just, uh, remove this prime account and here you go. That's, that's really much cleaner. If you execute this again, it should be four and it's working great. For the next step, it's time to introduce uh, another Ruby way to do things. So when it comes to erasing Ruby, actually erasing Ruby have feelings and you can express them through code, which is Beautiful. So uh, instead here, uh, I, I'm not happy with this uh, specific piece of code. And what I can do, I, I'm gonna keep this code just, uh, we can just compare them. And uh, I'm going to work with this uh, while expression with these local variables. So one thing that I can do is, uh, as you can see, we get a item, you get an item, and then we have number, which is the item minus one. So let's say that we have six, for example, and then the number will be five, the item minus one. And then for the next iteration, four, the next three, the next two, the next one, but I don't care about one, as you can see here. So I can go from, let's separate this, from five to two. When it comes to arrays, you can do that automatically in Ruby. You can just say, instead of uh, going from five to two, I'm going to invert that. So I can just say, hey Ruby, please go from two until the item that I'm receiving minus one, which means that if you're receiving six, Ruby automatically goes from two until five. That's really beautiful. So the next step is, of course, use the each method. And then let's see, for each item that I have, again, this will be a block, an expression. I can just say, hey, if you have number item, in this case item, divided by number and the remainder value is uh, zero, then please return false. Again, uh, let's just remove this code, this entire code, and here we go. So <laughs> I have, to, of course, to erase all of these things, and 
And the next step is just executing this code. And as you can see, this is really, really better than the previous code. So let's execute. And yeah, it's wrong. It's wrong because you have a number here and you don't have number. And of course, you don't have number because this is the right name. Let's execute this again. And yeah, four, here we go. So this code is really, really better, much better than the previous one. And in the final step, uh, we're gonna be cheating on Ruby because I just want to use this uh, standard library that we can just calculate if the, if the number is prime or not. So let's see how it goes. Well, I just want to require a special library in Ruby that will be called prime. And then instead of using is prime, which is the method that we have created, and I'm going to use the prime class, which has this method prime. That's, that's amazing. You have this question mark when you are asking a question. So uh, we have prime, prime item. And here we go. If you execute this code, mm, okay, let's go again. Oh yeah, okay, here we go. So we have this uh, four, which is working really, really well. Let's remove our method and that's it. So of course I'm cheating on Ruby because I'm using this uh, library. The idea here is go through the process manually just to understand how uh, we can solve all of these problems, all of these algorithms. So that's it. I hope that you like it and see you tomorrow in the next video.